Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. If you are here for the first time, then welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been here for a second or third time, welcome back. Please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button, like, and share. Also hit the notification bell so you will be updated each and every time I upload a video if you enjoy this content. Tonight we are going to be reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 2 episode 17 ayama fixed my life honey ayama fixed nothing honey these help are still broken okay now i know ayama rhymes with ayanla and they were trying to be cute with the title of it all but ayanla she is not honey and mel and tisha are still going around and about in a circle so honey it was a flop all right let's get into it um we see marceau in his new venture black honey yes for the generational wealth of it all Okay, so he's talking with Andrea, who's one of his architectural friends. Basically, he's trying to get a cheap discount, honey. He wants to get it for the cheap. So he said he's hoping to get a modest price. He wants the friend discount. Honey, if you don't pay full price for this lady's, um, for her knowledge and for her work, honey, you're sitting up here trying to get a discount. Child, what is wrong with you? You better pay full price to this woman. So as he's in there talking to her about a little space in the building that he wants to make a brunch spot, here come Martel popping up. Because y'all know he going to pop up if he don't do nothing else, child. He don't have male to film with and dress alike and pretend like they one big happy family. So now he got to pop up everywhere he can. And so today it was Marceau, okay? So he pops up and he says he's checking on Marceau. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they start to talk about the history of the space that they're standing in and what it used to be. And Martel was saying that it used to be um, a little spot that had like little odds and ends and his mom and him would come there when they were low on money and put things on layaway and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, here go Marceau. Yeah, it was just a bunch of junk in here. I'm like, oh my God, Marceau, honey, you love to put that foot in your mouth, child. So as they're talking about that, Marceau starts telling Martel, honey, it's too many M's. Martel, Marceau, Maurice, Mickey Mouse, built a house. Like, it's just too many M's. Like, I can't even. And then Mel, all them M kids, they got it. Mel talk like Minnie Mouse. And it's just too many M's, honey. I need a break. That's why I'd be happy to say Tisha, Kimmy. Like, break it up. The monotony of it all. Ooh, okay. Anyway, child, just a side note. I had to go on a little rant. Tongue tied me with all them dang on M's. So then Marceau tells Martel of his plans about the spot. He tells them that he spoke with Chris, you know, the person who came to see him about the apartment building. He was like, huh, I'm all in. So here go Martel. Well, um, that project's on hold uh, because, you know, with all the stuff that me and Mel are going through, uh, we can't sell it. Sure, Martel. Basically, you don't want to sell it. You want to put it on hold so that Mel doesn't get any of the money and no one else, honey. You, that's, that's what really is going on. Marceau said, well, I kind of feel like it was cursed from the start. A, the land for the 47 acres he made that deal behind his back. And number B, what the hell is number B? <laughs> I could have sworn B was an alphabet. But okay, Marceau, set yourself off, child. He's like, and number B, it's um tapping into his messy divorce. And C, from what Maurice said, Martel may have another baby on the way. Maurice ain't said that. You implied that and came up with your own conclusions after surfing Beyonce's internet. Come on here now. Don't try to put throw Maurice under the bus. You know he did not tell you that. So after that, Marcel, he asked Martel, he said, well, how are you? And Martel said, you know, I'm doing better than people would think. I'm just trying to focus on my kids and focus on my finances. I know you are focusing on your finances. That's why you're telling everybody that this deal is on hold, honey. You don't want nobody's hands in that pot so you could take care of them 15 kids you done had. So Marcel said, I'll be happy if y'all just hit rock bottom. Martel like, what? Say what now? And he was like, well, you know, I just feel like y'all just keep trying to catch yourself from hitting the bottom. And then once you hit the bottom, you'll be able to work your way up. That's true. I never thought of it that way. And I feel like that is, you know, pretty good advice because once they get all the way down, it's only up from there. Martel was like, I'm already there. <laughs> I'm already broken, child. It's, it's really nothing you can do that can break me any further. As they're talking, you know, Marceau is giving him some sound advice. And then he invites him, you know, Marcel's getting ready to ease on out because he's only there for, for a minute. He's getting ready to leave. And so Marceau invited him to their soft opening. After that, we see Mel at home sitting at the table, peeling her potatoes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
for my tip, my, uh, what's the girl's name? Mel was in there peeling potatoes and putting on a roast because, honey, she's about to get her Sunday dinner on. So as she's cooking, then Martel's mom comes over. Honey, her name probably began with an M too, child. I'm not sure because there's so many M's and I'm so confused at this moment. I couldn't tell you. So they have a really good relationship too. I, I know that her and Martel were together for 14 years. So over the 14 years, they've built a bond. But she loved her some meal. You can just tell even when she walked through the door, I was like, okay, she actually likes her daughter-in-law. That's so sad, man. Ugh. Oh, Martel, child. So she comes in. She's like, girl, I'm cooking. And so Mel said, you know, it's the favorite thing that I like that you cook. She was like, what is that? And his mom was like, everything. So they start laughing a little bit. She's like, no, roast. I'm cooking a roast. And so they come in. They start talking. And so Mel, I guess she was reminiscing or whatever, because in the confessional, she was like, you know, you just never realize how many people you're affecting. And it affects everyone. So it's 14 years down the drain, honey. You and Martel got together and decided to love each other and brought the families in. Now everyone's involved. It's four kids later. And now the demise of the relationship has happened and everyone is affected by it. The person that I think is affected by it the most is Martel's mom, honey. She loves her some male. So Mel tells his mom that Martel is going around telling anybody that'll listen his little smear campaign, you know, that Mel cheated. So Martel mom says, well, did you cheat? Mel looked at her like, <laughs> I know you can lie. What? Mel said, um, no. She said, I don't consider it cheating when I moved out and got my own place. She was like, you remember when I moved out and got my own place? Now y'all can come for me in these comments if y'all want to, honey. But this is the thing here. There were no clear boundaries set from the way that this is being told as far as Mel and Martel are concerned they were still married no it is not cheating in the sense of the way that Martel did it but it is still breaking your vows and she's saying that they didn't sleep together and she was saying that she only talked to the dude for three weeks and it was only when they moved out but quite frankly I feel like when you separate you separate to clear your head get yourselves together with the thought of a possible reconciliation but I mean, the latter could happen. So, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, child, it's up for debate, but in my, in my eyes, they both were wrong, but Martel is definitely, definitely in the wrong. So she was like, it was three weeks and no sex. And she was like, but Mel, but Martel, he was living a double life. You know, he would come home, play daddy daycare, throw the kids up in the air, acting like he was a loving husband, matching me and my fly everywhere we would go. And then on the side, he had a whole girlfriend for five years. So that's totally different. And it is. And she was like, you know, I really try to stay away from him because he stresses me out. So then she tells his mama, you know, he's trying to get full custody. That mama said, say what? She said, yeah, I guess he wants y'all to have them full time. Then mama said, no, ma'am, honey, he better rethink that. Mama need a life too. Honey, I raised my kids. I don't want to. Ra I love your kids, but I don't want to raise your kids. And you know what I was thinking? I was wondering, is Martell an only child? Because I never hear him speak of a sibling and the way his mom coddles him. Y'all remember last episode when she was like, you a good man. No matter if you cheated and destroyed your whole family, you a good man. Girl, shut up. So when I thought about that, I was like, I think Martel might be an only child, but that's just a side note that just popped into my head as I was watching the episode. So she was like, I'm not raising y'all kids child, period, point blank, honey. I'm ready for a hot girl summer, honey. <laughs> I ain't got time to be raising y'all chilling, okay? So Mel was like, well, hopefully with the new baby, he don't try to push these to the side. Okay, now Mel, you shouldn't have said that because this is the thing. If you are trying to heal and keep your inner peace, don't say nothing that somebody may be able to feed off of because this is what happens. Let me tell y'all something. When I was going through my breakup, I didn't want to know anything about what was going on because I needed to completely heal. I wouldn't even mention my ex's name around people that I knew were our mutual friends because I didn't want them to tell me something that I may not be ready to receive. So when she made this little snide comment about, you know, well, I hope he don't push these to the side when the new baby comes, that mama said, well, you know, that's going to be my grandchild. And I don't think Mel was ready to hear that. She said, that's going to be my grandchild and I'm going to have to love him no matter what. Mel said, oh, it's a him. And she said, yeah. She said, oh, I didn't know. 
Honey, I know that that had to hurt her because in the first season or was it the first half or whatever, whenever Mel found out she was pregnant, Martell wanted it to be a boy because, you know, he was outnumbered by all these females. And the fact that she is giving him a boy, you know, they do have one son, but the fact that she is giving him yet another son, child, oh my goodness, I know that hurt her so bad, child. I could see her heart sink to her feet when that mama said that. That's why you should make little comments like that. You should just keep that kind of stuff to yourself because if you ain't ready for it, honey, just keep it to yourself. Then we see Marceau over at the office and Tisha stops by, honey, looking snatched. Tisha, the body banging, honey, you were snatched. So she comes over in this little cute black dress and she was like, I had to a nice surprise set up because I just wanted him to know that um, I was here for him after the wreck. No, you just wanted to come and let him know what you was working with, honey, because Miss Wanda done put that seed in your mind and you wondering why was he driving that sports car down to a camping trip when he should have been driving his truck. That's the real deal. Honey, you trying to make sure you secure your man at home. So she came in looking real fine, honey, I have to say. Tisha got a nice little shape. So she came in. She told him that she had a surprise. So they're getting ready to leave. And he's thinking they're about to go to um, a restaurant or go wherever. They come outside and she has this private chef and this nice little restaurant pod set up. Because, of course, you know, we're going through COVID. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Okay, Tisha, thinking romantical, honey. So they go outside and um, they go into the pod. And he's like, this is so nice. Thank you, baby. And they start having a conversation. And our child, look here. They can't even have a conversation without Tisha bringing up Mel. Tisha, let's have a conversation about your love and the two of you. Let's not taint it with mess about Mel and that you want to go to the girls trip. And that shouldn't have been brought up in that moment. That's just my opinion of it. So as they're speaking, here go Marceau in his chauvinistic ways. You know, she was saying that she appreciates him and that she feels like that there could not be what they could not have what they have if it weren't for him. She's pouring into him. Poor Tisha. Then here go Marceau being the chauvinistic bonehead that he is. And he starts saying, well, I didn't want you to. I wanted you to step up as a businesswoman, but step back as a wife. Basically, go on, stay in the kitchen, barefoot and pregnant, honey. And please get back in the house, honey. He, you were already under quarantine before the quarantine happened. So you should have been nice and okay with us having to be under a stay-at-home order. Because Marceau had you under, under a stay-at-home order since y'all been together. Like, this is crazy. So then teacher starts telling Marceau about the event. Ugh. Child, I don't even like the word event anymore. And sometimes when I say event, I'm like, don't you mean even? Like, I'm confused. Like, don't do that to me, Tisha. I'm going to have to cut you off on Saturdays if you're going to do that. I'm going to have to fast forward you, honey. So she starts talking to him about the event and Mel, child, oh, as well as the girls, um, that the trip that Destiny planned. So he was like, you know what? You should go. And But Marceau did say that Tisha is right to be cautious because They've tried this before, and then they have a history of it going left. So he understands her being cautious about it. Martell, on the other um, on the other part of the episode, Martell is waiting for the exchange of the kids. They get out of the car, and <laughs> Mel gets out in this Tyler Perry wig. Honey, what is this wig? Girl, just wear your natural hair. Wear that little curly wig. Go show up with that wig and that braided down wig with that baby hair everywhere. Girl, go on. So she shows up in her Tyler Perry wig, honey, and tells him that the bottle, she left the bottle in the car. So he's like, all right, let me go get the bottle. So he said he could tell that she was kind of annoyed, honey. And she said herself, she was like, you know, when I, I love Martell's mom, but after talking to her, she really disturbed my inner peace. No, you heard something that you were not ready for. Don't pipe up if you're not ready for what may come out when you say things like that saying I hope he don't push these kids to the side for that new baby don't say that because you knew you were not ready for the response because let me tell you something as a woman me I would be saying something like that just to see if someone is going to validate whether or not he is really having a baby because you always hold on to that little glimmer of hope like I hope it's not true please don't let it be true that he having a baby but it's true and now you feel bad on the inside honey it's sitting up there meeting with his mama child go ahead so then as he's, she's getting the bottle, he's asking stuff and talking, you know, giving a little small talk. 
So then he tells her they need to talk. <sighs> Martel, y'all ain't got no phones. You always locking these kids up in the back seat of that truck and then going to talk and fuss with mail. You did that on the live the other day. Put them kids in the trunk and then start talking about the, the brother whooping them and asking what you teach them every day. And like, you're going to have to stop doing that. So they start talking and he was like, uh, you know, I, we're cool, right? And she was like, I'm not cool. And then they start arguing about the fact that she wants to move to ATL. So Martel was like, I don't want my kids going to Atlanta. And the only reason why they, she was like, well, they go, they say they want to go out there. Well, why are they saying they love Atlanta? He was like, because they're being spoiled out there. They have freedom. They do whatever they want. And then they're being spoiled. And he said, even Milani told me that she likes going out there because she doesn't have as many chores as she does here. Okay. See, that's the thing. And then Mel said, well, the re you know why she doesn't have a lot of chores? Because I take care of that. That is the difference between a mother and a father. A mother will do all the work. And then, you know, they might pick up a little piece of paper here and there and do a few chores. But when they're with a man, the man going to make them actually do some work because he don't want to do a child. Honey, it's a total difference between a mama and a daddy. They both love their kids, but at the same time, there is a difference. So she was like, and I don't think I don't know about you going around town talking about you want full custody because I want to be in Atlanta. No, that's the control tactic. He's doing that to spite you. That has nothing to do with you moving to Atlanta. He could really kill us. So she was like, um, you know, I feel like if I live in Huntsville, I'm going to have to face him. And I don't want to have to deal with that. I really rather be in Atlanta so I can feel free and, you know, not have to always have this in my face. I understand that. Because look here, Huntsville ain't no bigger than nothing. So you're bound to run into his new ready-made family just add water. And I know that that's going to make your stomach sink if you have to be a single mom with your four kids in tow and then he's over here playing husband and daddy to a whole new family and you've built 14 years with this man. So I don't blame you, honey. Pack on up and go down to the ATL, child, because I would not want to be down there facing them in grocery stores and running to them at the local Walmart, honey. You might have on that Tyler Perry wig, child. Goodbye. Uh-uh. No, thank you. Child, I ain't gonna be able to be, I ain't gonna be able to do it, child. So then, um, after she said that to him, he was like, well, I want to, she was like, the only reason why you want them around is because you want them to fulfill a void. You're empty inside Martel. And you know how she likes to say his whole name, Martel Holt. <laughs> Mel crazy. So he was like, of course I want to be around my kids. Those are my kids. I love my children. She was like, oh, and speaking of that, your mama told me you got a little boy on the way. Congratulations. And went and took her wig, honey, and got in the car. Well, y'all know Martel is not going to go down without a fight. He started following her out to the car with the car door all open. Mel, I need to talk. Mel, Martel, go head on, stupid child. By the way, every time I see you, you're just so dumb. Go on, leave that girl alone. And your kids are in the car waiting. And it's probably hot. The windows rolled up. And it's a small baby in there. Do y'all forget that y'all have a small baby? How old is this baby? Probably six months? And y'all got it locked up in that car. Child, go on. Then we go over and see Kimmy and her son meeting with Maurice, honey. I don't even know what this scene was about. I think it was just Maurice wanting to get some airtime because this was child. So basically what happened at this scene is that they sit down and Maurice is trying to instill in Jalen that he needs to be an entrepreneur. Kimmy, on the other hand, is telling him, let him figure it out on his own timing. The boy can't think for himself, but yet he just graduated from college. So he's telling them that I don't have a plan right now. I'm not passionate about anything right now. Okay, and Kimmy is like, that's okay. Maurice is like, that's not okay. You need to have a plan. And all I was thinking is, let this grown man figure it out in due time. As long as he's working and not slouching and laying on the couch every day, all day, it should be fine for him to figure things out and navigate life on his own. I understand where Mar Maurice is coming from, trying to help him. But at the same time, Kimmy don't want that boy to be raised. Child, that boy already grown. So just let him do what he gonna do. And where is that other one? What's his name? Monster? Oh, well, but honey, he must be back down there with, um, what was it? What was the woman's name? His wife's name? Child, it, it was such a, a weird name, but he must be back down there with his mama. Cause I haven't heard anything about him this entire episode and, pro and season. And it's probably because of COVID or he just moved back either or. So they're having that. And then the, the consensus of it with all three of them was that they were just going to let Jalen figure it out on his own and scene child then we go over to um then we now we're on our way to do the girls meet up 
we see Kimmy meeting up with Mel and Kimmy was like, I mean, and Mel was like, oh, you look cute. No, she don't, honey. T uh, girl, what do you have on, Kimmy? Honey, formal at the top with a little bit of party at the bottom. Child, what is this? Lace top with these shorts. Girl, anyway, looking good in country. So they're standing around waiting. They take a little wine, honey, waiting in the woods. And Tisha shows up at midnight. Tisha, you were late on purpose because you didn't have any sense of urgency about you when you got there. You didn't say, oh my gosh, sorry, I'm late. The kids were like, child, you were rolling and strolling in there like, child, y'all better be glad I even came. Once I saw it was nighttime, I started to reschedule. <laughs> That's how Tisha was rolling up in there, okay? So then Destiny being passive aggressive child, she's like, well, let's do another toast to lateness. I'm like, girl, just tell the girl she was late and gone on. So as they're walking to the back, Mel was like, this scenery makes me think of an outdoor wedding because girl, I'm definitely going to have me an out outdoor wedding. Child, get divorced first. Worry about getting divorced from this narcissist before you try planning something else. And then take some time to yourself. You've been in relationship with him since you were in college, honey. Be free. Do you. Find you some good wigs. Go out, enjoy yourself, date. And then find the person that is for you. Don't try to beat Martell to the altar because it always backfires. Trust me. I know. Okay. So then they go back there. They're having a little bite to eat. And then Destiny tells them they're about to get ready to play games. So Tisha was like, well, can I put on my other um my other pants? And they look in to see what's going on. Here go Mel. We were having fun. And then Tisha has to go and do a wardrobe change. How y'all were having fun? You were sitting over there on the rail and looking like you were about to fall asleep. Kimmy and Destiny over there eating these cucumber sandwiches, honey. Nobody looked like they was having fun. And y'all started playing Twister. Let this girl put on pants. You want a vagine out in this skirt she got on? Girl, and she changed her wig, honey. Go on. Child, Tisha said, honey, full on wardrobe change, child. Change the wig and the wardrobe. So they started playing Twister. It was going pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It was going fine. Then they go over and see Mel's friend, Ayama. Well, Ima. Is that her name? Ima. Yeah, that's her name. Ima. So she says she's there as a mediator and she's a shaman. And Kimmy is like, what's that? Then Tisha basically was like, what in the voodoo priestess is going on here, honey? I don't understand her language, but Tisha, honey, you don't need to be worried about nobody's language and you can't even enunciate and or pronounce the word event okay just have fun at this event okay so then they go out and she's like you guys can have a seat on the ground wherever it's called grounding and so then she asked them she asked destiny she said what are your intentions destiny said to bring them together she asked kimmy and kimmy said her role is um to see where her role is and what she plays in the circle then mel was like i want to remove the lack of trust and replace it with trust tisha was like to move forward in whatever the universe has for us or half for us or has for us, honey. I don't know, child. She mispronounced it and used the, the wrong word either way it got. So after that, she says, what we're going to do is we're going to raise our right hand for our dad and our left hand for our mom. Okay. If this is something that your parents have exhibited. So they say a workaholic. Mel says that she never thought about it, but her mom and dad were both workaholics. So maybe that's what happened with her then um aggressive speech tisha said her mom never says she loves her now i want y'all to listen to this okay now listen on this channel i am objective i see both sides i'm not all the way team male i'm not all the way team tisha i'm gonna say exactly how i feel and what my opinion of the situation is okay and when she said that her mom had never told her that she loved her and she brought it to her mom's attention. Her mom said, you know what? I never noticed that, but I don't say it because that was not ever given to me. That's why Tisha's, that's why her love language is words of affirmation because she never received that. That's why she's always worried about who's on my side and who has my back and the way people speak to her because that is something that's stemming from when she was younger. And I, I hope them hearing that will help them understand why she processes the way things the way that she does and i think miss wanda may be trying to overcompensate for the fact that she didn't tell that girl she love her so now she's trying to just go to war for her over any little thing miss wanda come on now girl okay so um ima says she's going to give them some cards and then she wants them to give it to the person that it's for and then explain to them why you gave them that card so destiny hands mail a card that says protected and starts crying child whatever honey 
she was like oh she goes so hard for me no matter what and i'm like okay y'all mel gives tisha misunderstood okay so then mel proceeds to tell her that the reason why she gave her misunderstood is because at the time of their friendship being broken down and the breakdown of their friendship happened because of a misunderstanding honey and this is when everything went left and all hell broke loose tisha was like no it was not because of a misunderstanding no no i'm sorry so then the shaman asks, well, Tisha, what's your response to that? She said, I feel like it's some BS. I feel like she has a right to, to voice her opinion. She asked her how she felt and she said she feels it's some BS. Tisha does want to move forward, but at the same time, she's still harping on the fact that Mel tried to say that Marceau slept with 20 women and that Marceau was sleeping with her hairstylist and all this kind of stuff. And Tisha is not over that. When you try to break somebody's marriage down, of course, they're not going to be over that. And I'm just going to tell you straight up. I don't feel like it was right for Mel to post things on social media. Her and Martell need to be banned from social media. That is my take on that. Both of them played a role in the demise of their relationship. So Mel was like, what's some BS? Like, she was like, well, you're lying. She's like, well, what did I lie about? Then she's like, you tried to say that my husband was cheating on me. And those were things that were going on in your relationship, not in mine. And then she was like, and then the person who you posted it about ended up saying that it wasn't true and so mel doesn't want to admit that she lied so mel was like i will never say a lie no lies will ever come out of my mouth honey we all lie child whether you accidentally lie or you on purpose lie nobody's perfect everyone has lied before so then tisha was like mel was like well no that's not where the breakdown happened the breakdown happened because you thought i was mad at you about something because i was being distant when that really wasn't the case they do a flashback, you know, validating what Mel is saying, but then they also do a flashback validating what Tisha is saying because Mel made a comment when they were at the cabin last year and she said that Martel didn't start cheating until he started hanging with Marceau and Maurice. I don't believe that. The way Martel in these streets, honey, he was cheating long before Marceau and Maurice came along. And that's just my take on that. So as far as Mel is concerned, I do remember them having some sort of tiff and then Tisha felt like something was a little bit off and Mel kept telling her everything's fine, everything's fine. And then the relationship just started breaking down from there. So both of them are in the right, but at the same time, at this moment, both of them are in the wrong because if y'all really want to move forward, all that high pitch screaming you doing mail and all this blockage that you got going on tisha let it go if you want to really move forward you just said two seconds prior that you wanted to move forward and whatever the universe have for you you want that to take place but then when mail gets up and gives you a card to try to break the ice then uh, you start with the bs so i mean i just don't understand what's really going on child are y'all gonna get it together or not? Because I'm getting sick of it, quite frankly. It's giving me real OG and Evelyn. I'm getting sick of it, y'all. Mel gets up and starts cackling. And then Tisha said, you know, talk about the post you put up. And Mel said, what about the post? I'm like, oh my goodness. So she's like, what did the post say? And Tisha was like, I'm not about to do this with you. I'm not about to do this with you. Then Tisha said Mel was trying to put her marriage in the same place as hers and that her marriage is not hers. Mel says, well, I know your situation. No, she said, I know my situation and I, it's no way that I could break up your marriage. And Tisha was like, no, it's not a way that you can break up my marriage. But you were putting things out there, Mel, that could have damaged her marriage. Like, let's just keep it real. Tisha was like, but you were putting things out there. So then Mel said, well, I know my situation. And uh, I also basically know more about your life than you do. Child, oh my goodness, honey. They ain't gonna never come to terms with nothing. Mel, nobody wants to hear about their marriage, honey. Nobody wants to hear about that. She was like, I tried to be fit, be peaceful, but when she gets angry, then people paint her out to be the bad guy and she's just not about to do it. Tisha was just sitting there looking crazy. And Tisha, you should have taken this opportunity to try to really have an honest conversation with conversation with Mel and let her know exactly what she did to hurt you so that she could apologize. Hell, y'all forgave Martel? He said 20 women and I know he know way more than uh, Mel does. The only reason why she knows the information is because Martel ran it back. So y'all just need to have some kind of conversation come to come some kind of resolve. And that's basically how the episode ended with both Tisha and Mel not getting through anything at all, honey. It was a bust.
Destiny, epic fail. All right, well, that's my review on Love and Marriage Huntsville tonight. If I had to rate the episode, I would rate it um, a seven and a half. It was pretty good. There were some ups and some downs, but this season is nothing compared to season one. If you are an avid watcher, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Season one was so good and so genuine, but this is what we got. Feel free to comment down below. Please keep it respectful. I'm for everyone's opinion. I don't mind. But when you start going in on me like we know each other personally, honey, it's going to be a problem. Don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.